welcome guys today we're gonna explain how to design the first reactor in the ethylene glycol plant but before we do so we're gonna learn a few things related to plug flow reactor okay as you recall we said we're gonna achieve our objective of learning how to design isothermal reactors through designing the reactors of the multi-reactor chemical plant which produces ethylene glycol from ethylene glycol from ethane and the first reactor in this plant is actually a plug flow reactor so let's learn a few things about plug flow reactors tubular reactors let's write the differential form of the plug flow reactor design equation in terms of x okay you know how to write it already and this is the design equation in the absence of pressure drop and temperature variation we evaluate the integral form of the plug flow reactor design equation to obtain v so we do some manipulation write the equation this way then we integrate to find the total volume of a plug flow reactor required to achieve a conversion x okay let's consider a second order reaction where minus ra equals k times ca to the power 2 that takes place as the first case liquid phase reaction and the second case is a gas phase reaction so let's start with the first case where we have liquid phase reaction okay evaluate the reactor volume for an isothermal operation let's evaluate the reactor volume the first thing we need to do is to write the design equation the second thing we need to do is to write the rate law the third thing of course to utilize the stoichiometry oops why do we have this let's see yeah sorry about that and uh, let's write the stoichiometry so we have ca equals fa divided by epsilon and we know that fa equals fa naught one minus x and epsilon equals of course we ask ourselves is it liquid phase or gas phase reaction it's a liquid phase reaction so it's safe to assume epsilon equal epsilon naught so there we go and then of course we write this ratio as c a naught then we have one minus x we substitute for a using this equation and then we substitute for minus r a using the resulting equation and then we get the setup correct and from calculus or from the appendix a3 we can integrate this uh, integral this function and find the resulting equation so now we have the equation representing the volume of a plug flow reactor where you have a liquid phase reaction type now let's find x as a function of damp color number where damp color number two is the damp color number for a second order reaction of course you know what damp color number is so you write the definition of damp color number and then of course you can solve this equation you can solve this equation you can solve it for x so this is how it looks like and you already know that this quantity is the damp color number for a second order reaction so you can see from here that x is function of tau k and c a naught that means these three things affect the conversion in a flow reactor 
and of course all of these guys are all these three guys are the down color number so down color number which represents how much conversion you can get this function of tau k c naught and all of them affects the conversion tau which is part of the reson uh, uh, residence time k which is part of the how fast the reaction goes rate constant so it affects the rate of reaction and c naught it affects as we said before two things it affects the reaction rate because higher C A naught means higher concentration inside the reactor so higher rate of reaction and also affects the convective rate of addition of A if A naught right so if A naught is affected by C A naught okay let's proceed now let's discuss a case where we have a gas phase reaction and obviously here we cannot assume that epsilon to be constant we can assume the volumetric flow rate to be constant because the volumetric flow rate of a gas phase depends on three things right number of moles pressure and temperature okay so let's again evaluate the reactor volume for an isothermal operation with negligible pressure drop for unknown values of epsilon Type. so let's do that we need the volume let's start with the design equation right and then let's write the rate law and again we write the stoichiometry so it's utilize the stoichiometry to write ca ca equals fa divided by epsilon and fa equals fa naught one minus x what about epsilon we ask ourselves do we have a gas phase or a liquid phase in this case we have a gas phase reaction so epsilon equals epsilon naught times the three correction factor the first one is related to the total number of mole which is one plus epsilon x and then t over t naught this is the second correction factor related temperature and then we have p naught over p okay so let's look at this equation we have negligible pressure drop so this guy equals almost one and we have isothermal operation so this guy equals one so we are left with c here c a naught one minus x and here we have one plus epsilon x okay so let's again substitute for C A naught here using this equation and then substitute for minus R A using the resultant resulting equation which we get this. Okay and now we want to integrate and we can look at the appendix in this case I can see that it's uh, equation A7 and the appendix go ahead and look at it in your appendix and we get the result of the integration to be this okay now let's plot x along the volume of the reactor for different values of epsilon let's assume y a naught equals one and the ratio epsilon naught over k c a naught equals two liters so we want to plot x along the volume of the reactor time so in this case we need to make a table in order to plot and since in this equation x is the independent variable we can start with x correct so here we go we start with x in our table so we vary x from 0 to 1 okay and then for a given value of epsilon let's say epsilon equals to minus one uh, we can calculate the value of v at different values of x and then we choose another value for epsilon let's say epsilon equals to zero and we calculate v for the different values of of x for this given epsilon so go ahead and do that using excel and then you will get something similar to this 
Okay, so you can read this figure in different ways. You can say, well, for given epsilon, that means for given stoichiometry. Let's choose this stoichiometry. And for a given stoichiometry, for a given reaction, A goes to 3B in this case. Larger reactors, right? Larger reactors leads to larger or gives larger conversion okay so this is one way to read it or you can say as we go down the length of the reactor conversion increases for a given stoichiometry or or we can fix the volume we can fix the volume and we say reactions reactions with larger values of epsilon would lead to smaller conversion. Hmm, interesting, right? So that means a smaller epsilon leads to larger conversions. Why is that? So we said reactions with a smaller epsilon, okay, leads to higher conversion, as you can see higher conversion for a given volume. What's the reason? Well, let's explain it the right way. Let's look at the volumetric flow rate because we know that epsilon affects the volumetric flow rate, correct? Okay, so if we have reactions with a smaller epsilons, that means we'll get smaller volumetric flow rate correct so of course i mean down the length of the reactor okay so let's let's check this out let's check this out okay so we are plotting epsilon over epsilon naught versus volume that's down the length of the reactor so again reactions with smaller epsilons okay this is smaller epsilons here okay smaller epsilon sorry Epsilon, so okay, will have smaller volumetric flow rate at a given position down the length of the reactor, as you can see. So, again, here if we choose uh, this volume, you can see that the blue line, which represents the smallest epsilons, okay, the smallest epsilon actually have the smallest volumetric flow rate and. We know that volumetric flow rate affects the concentration. Okay, so CA equals FA over epsilon over the volumetric flow rate. So if this was a small, okay, this will be large, correct? Okay, so you will end up having higher concentration. Is that true? Well, let's plot CA over CA0 versus V again. Again, let's look at the smallest, the reaction with the smallest epsilon. Okay, the blue line. You can see that you have the highest concentration, right? The highest concentration. Okay, because the volumetric flow rate was the smallest. Okay, why is that? Because it's not expanding. Actually, the volume, the volumetric flow rate is getting smaller and smaller as it goes down the length of the reactor. Okay, so we're ending up with higher concentrations compared to the other reactions. Higher concentration means higher reaction rate. See, higher reaction rate actually throughout the whole volume of the reactor you have higher rate of reaction for the reactions with the smallest epsilon okay and you know that higher rate of reaction leads to what higher rate of reaction leads to higher conversion okay and you can see here that again the reaction with the smallest epsilon will get or will achieve higher conversion.
for the same volume, same initial concentration, same entering volumetric flow rate, same temperature. Okay, that means, actually that means what? That means tau is the same, okay, tau is the same, k is the same, c naught is the same, okay, and all the above cases, these three are same. What does that mean? You have same damn color number, yet you are achieving higher conversion. This is an interesting story, right? And please do not explain the higher conversion by saying you have higher residence time. Residence time is not a design parameter. Okay? So we always look at the rate of reaction. Everything is explained by the rate of reaction. Great. As we reach the end of segment one of lecture 19, we'll meet you shortly in segment two.